everybody likes the idea of taking something that you're familiar with and turning it into something that you're not as familiar with, like a 18-wheeler semi into Optimus Prime. And so that was the beginning. I joined Hasbro in 2000, and the company was in some degree of difficulty. So we were focusing back on our core brands, and Transformers was one of those brands that we began to really rethink about, and how do we reignite this brand for future generations? I was aware of the TV show, I used to watch it with the kids, but I thought, this is a movie waiting to come out and be dusted off and to be reinvented as a live action experience. I'm going to end your hunger once and for all. We were initially really resistant to the idea of doing it because it's something that we had cared about as kids and that's always kind of a, it's, it's on the one hand really exciting to take that challenge and on the other hand you go like, I don't want to screw this up. The first thing that I sat down with with the writers was a, a, an idea to make this a story about a boy in his car because that's something everybody can relate to. Bumblebee, head for the underground parking entrance. Transformers were always about robots in disguise and more than meets the eye. And that more than meets the eye could mean more than just the robots. And more than meets the eye could mean something about the human characters. But there were very few humans that we could draw from. So it meant coming up with characters that didn't exist before. In the original cartoon, there was a, a mechanic character who was kind of the basis for Sam. We kind of looked to movies like E.T. for the way that Elliot became the audience in how we were experiencing the wonder and the magic of E.T. coming to Earth. My first draft actually was just focused on the kids. That's awesome! Steven Spielberg called me right when I was finishing The Island, and he said, I'd like to do Transformers, and I'm like, okay, all right, I'll think about it. Hung up, I'm not doing that movie. That's what I said to myself, I'm not doing a toy movie. I thought about it, and I went to Hasbro in Rhode Island, and uh, they put me through Transformer school. This is the classic G1 Optimus Prime, very much like it was made in the 80s. He had a very simple transformation. Very easy to get from vehicle to robot. We did the full pitch. Robots are not all equal. They're alive, they're sentient men, they have feelings, they have allegiances, you know, there's backstory, there's a conflict, you know, that they are fleshed out characters and that we've had so many eras and there's so much potential that they could pull from to make whatever kind of movie they wanted to make. Something in Transformers just struck me when I was sitting there. I said to myself, if you can make this really real and edgy, and I saw a couple images that were towards the direction that they would like to take this, and I'm like, that's really interesting. So I think right then and there, I was kind of sold on trying to make this idea work. Michael Bay was born to direct Transformers. He was the perfect fit for this concept. Yeah, I hired a team, probably about 25 artists, different people from different kind of expertise, and, and we were starting to design robots. There was apparently a script. I hear it was way too kitty. No one wanted me to read it because they thought I would quit right then and there. Michael has incredible instincts about what will please an audience. And so as we were developing the script, we would run ideas by him, and we'd say, what do you think about this? I knew I wanted to make it very credible and serious, and I told these guys I wanted to broaden it out and make it so that it had a little more global impact. Much like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Richard Dreyfuss' story is clearly the centerpiece, as Shia LaBeouf's story is the centerpiece of our movie. But then we have two other groups of humans that we follow quite closely. I kept putting in things of, of different action stuff that I saw, and what we do is that we sit down, we bat it around, and uh, they see what I'm really liking and not liking. Once he got into the rhythm of it, he started imagining these incredible sequences. And a lot of what we ended up doing action-wise was very collaborative. He is the sickest action director on the planet. That is something that he is. He's not Ilya Kazan. And Mike will tell you that. There's a missile coming right down that street down there. It's gonna hit that truck right there. The robots are holding it up. Okay, roll cameras. Roll arrows. Speed. Ready. Ready. And four, three, two, one. Go. 
Michael staged huge, logistically complicated scenes of massive destruction and explosions. And even when I was watching those dailies without the actual Transformers there, it was just eye candy. In this movie, Michael is the star. And Michael is so much fun. We line everything up with the football. Ready and hook! And three, two, one, bam! Does that work? Thank you very much. You have the timing? That's perfect. Action! I think Bayham's a good word for working with Michael. I mean, we have to be prepared to go in any direction. Get the armor. Cut. Might show up and he might say, today I want to flip a car. You have to be three steps ahead of Michael. <laughs> you hear on the walking when I'm walking in, Bay's coming in, he's coming in hot, he's coming in hot. Here we go. Ready. You know, it's all wired because I'm ready to go. When I come into the set, I want to start shooting. Come on, on camera, let's go. He's got a tireless kind of energy, and I understood that that's how he gets into it, and then he's into it. It's like an actor getting into character. Jim, lift him up again, do it again, do it again. Keep rolling. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, please, don't kill me, please, please. Keep moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. Okay, okay, okay. Jim, lift him up again, do it again, do it again. Keep rolling. Oh, God, oh, God. Mike needs people who can accommodate his needs, and you need to be able to adapt. You can't be the guy who's got the script notes and the and the and the ledger. And no, I can't do that because in the next scene, I can't, you can't be that guy. Michael will eat you alive. This ain't gonna. It ain't gonna trust me. I saw it. I can stand under it. Trust me, I said. Trust me, I said. What he is, is he's very honest, he's very blunt, he's very direct, he's very opinionated. Give me a shot, Dave. And he has an amazing visual sense of film. Yeah! He likes to use the megaphone once in a while. Ready, and yeah, rolling cameras! Three, two, one! Stay there, behind the pillar. No, you're gonna wrong way. The other way, other way. God, he doesn't pay attention to what we're shooting. The thing about it is it's never personal. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? Awesome what are you going to do? Soul Soul Man? Man? Yeah, buddy. Really? Yeah, Randy. Uh, what? I've worked with a crew, many of the same people, for 10, 15 years. So they know my style. They know my pace. Hey, Mike. We're going to get a fire. a lot of success attached to what Michael does and there's a lot of, of careers that have prospered by being part of the films with him. So he attracts a lot of actors. How do you know you're getting a good shot? I've been doing this for a long time. Well, my producer, Ian Bryce, said to me, well, you, should, you should get this kid Shia. And I said, I thought he was older. So he came in and he actually looked like a 16 year old. Now tell me what happened. No, no, you said you picked me up, no questions asked. I know, that was a deal. Uh, Remember how Great Grace pretty much flew over the cuckoo's nest? Uh -huh. You think it could have been passed on to me like a mutant with wiki gene? First, I was like, wow, they're making a Transformers movie. It's insane, you know? They're going to mess that up completely. They're going to screw that up so bad. But when I first sat down with Mike, it was never the discussion of, let's talk about the robots. The first thing he wanted to talk about was, how do we make this real? How do we make these characters come across as honest? Gentlemen, Bobby Bolivia, like the country. Let's double out the Hershey squirts. Hmm. I'm gonna help you. My son here is looking to buy his first car. What I like about Shia is he's the everyday dude, but he's great at improv, and he's got a great comic wit. Nice, right? It fits me. Shia is one of the funniest people, just naturally. It's hard to get through scenes with him sometimes, though, because he's so good at improv, and he gets like funnier and funnier as he goes. 
I just didn't recognize you. Yeah, well, I mean, that's understandable. You know, I just got back from fat camp. I lost like 80 pounds. Oh, so, well, you know what? That's good for you. Yeah. That's good for you. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot. And you know, you're I just, a stronger person. Yeah, physically and mentally. Yeah. Did and you make so, friends? But yeah, I mean, some of them died because, you know, diabetes is really chronic <laughs> there. But uh, I, I mean, like, there's three or four that I kept in contact with, and they're really good people. You know? Because fat people aren't bad people. <laughs> and that's one of the main things they teach you there. It's hard for me to try to not laugh because I get in trouble because we won't ever make it through a scene. I just put that light in. <laughs> Most importantly, I think he can keep up with Bay. Bay is constantly evolving the characters, is constantly throwing something different at you. My first scene actually was with the dogs. It was like, welcome to Michael Bay's set. Release the hounds. You need to stay hidden until I tell you, okay? Yes, yes. But the trainer's worried about your ass. But we are insured at DreamWorks, the Paramount. <laughs> you know, it's your first day. Hey, welcome. And the whole crew's like, hey, nice to meet you. And action, and you're running. The dogs started getting smart after a while. And instead of stopping a camera, the dogs kept chasing Shia. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Fortunately, Shia ran past me about 30 miles an hour, and I was able to grab the long chain that was attached to the dog. Thank God Shia's a fast runner, all right? Because that thing wasn't stopping. It was going to clamp down on that poor kid's ankle, I'm telling you. That would have been the end of, of, of me in this film. It would have been the first day. Bay talked about um, how hot Michaela was going to be. We talked about finding literally the most gorgeous 18-year-old there is out there, which I think we did. I think we did. I think we did. Right now, and action. Oh, God, if Trent could just see me right now. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? You just say, if Trent could Trent, see me right yeah, now? Yeah, if Trent could see me right now. This is crazy. We interviewed a lot of different young women for this, and yes. Megan, I don't know, I just liked her look. I liked that no one really knew about her. I think Shia helped her out. I think the energy between them, I think it kind of works. Hope I didn't get you stranded or anything like that. That's uh, fine. So uh, I was wondering if I could ride you home. I mean, uh, listen, I was headed this way, figured, you know, I'd ask you if you wanted to ride or not. You know, I'm just putting it out there. Right, yeah, don't say it's fine, just kind of a <laughs> nod. The only thing Mike asked me when uh, I was reading with him and auditioning, he just asked me if I could run. He's like, can you run? I was like, well, yeah, I think so. And the other thing he asked me, he goes, do you have a nice stomach? And I said, well, in my opinion, yes, I do. So I figured right, I'm going to be running, hopefully not naked, but I'll be running in a belly shirt, maybe. Go! Megan did good with all the running and jumping and cars skidding and everything else going on. I think Megan really hung in there. Drop. Ah. Just from filming, I've put on like almost 10 pounds of muscle. Hey guys, give me a 30 pad right here. 30, 30 pad coming in. Yeah. All right, we're off the roll camera. All right, here we go. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> My wife on? Yes, Captain. We needed a leading man. Yeah. We needed a leading man. There were lots of great actors out there, but leading man is very different from just a good actor, and Josh encompasses that. I'm thinking I might win an Academy Award for this role. No, I don't want a premium package! Come on! Come on! Fall back! Best screaming in a movie. Lenny! Oh, water, thank you. Give That's me right. chocolate. <laughs> you got chocolate? Say, give me chocolate. You got chocolate? You got chocolate? No. I liked him as a person because he was just, he was like very American, kind of no BS, just kind of a, just a nice guy. Colonel Moore offered me the opportunity to go up in a T-38 today. A lot of these military guys were very much like Josh, so I thought it worked really well. Yeah, I'm with the, I'm with the, I'm with the top dog. <laughs> You'll be fine. I had to go through about four or five hours of training, and you know they basically tell you, okay, this is what's going to happen if you have to eject from the seats. I had to change shorts after I left that training. <laughs> I get to fly in at 2:38 today. 
<laughs> not too <laughs> snug, but not too <laughs> loose. Hold them tight. And that snap rolls from <laughs> bottom to top. <laughs> Take a breath and hold it, please. And that's how it sits. I am happy if I get a chance to show what we in the Air Force can do and what great airmen we have. It was one of the most exciting things I've ever done. And he let me actually fly it a little bit. He's like, okay, turn it 10 degrees and we'll go down to 1,500 feet. I didn't throw up once. <laughs> Tarnisha, Tanisha, and Keisha. <laughs> They're laughing at my daughter's name? Yeah. Damn, get me home. <laughs> All right, cut. All right. Hey, Mark. All right, good. Tyrese, he paid me to be in this picture, so um, I took his money. Commonly, when you start movies, uh, I make a mistake, too, when you just, just take too long. Right. Michael Bay, it keeps everybody on edge so we can all stay sharp and on top of our game, because he's on top of his game, and, uh, you know, if you don't step up, you get left by the wayside. Ready? Action! Hello, do you hear me? You hear me now? Hello, 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 hello. hello. No, I got no bar. I got no bar. <laughs> I had a little situation right before I started filming. I just got sick, really sick. And I ended up missing like the first three days of filming. So to get back on the set after all of the warnings and precautions my doctor hit me with, and to be in Alamogordo was just crazy. 120 some degrees, white sand bouncing, the sun, bam, can't even look at the sand because it was so bright. Just hot, hot for no damn reason at all. I've always wanted to work with him. John Turturro, and I'm really glad I did, and I was intimidated the first day working with him, and uh, I got on with him very well. Rolling, feeding. Ready, and action. Your son's the great-grandson of Captain Archibald Wickety, is he not? It's Witwicky. Witwicky? Witwicky. Man to the premises, sir. I've definitely been enjoying myself, so I feel like I've been able to be a little creative and imaginative. Sometimes you don't get a chance in a really big film. Hey, hey, hey! Get that thing to stop, huh? Looking at us, looking at us. Get that thing to stop! <laughs>